want to try to pass literature course. This is a podcast for anyone who loves literature. Hi, I'm Bella. Do you remember me in the last episode? I'm the co-host partner with Alex, and in this episode, we will have Jessie to be my partner. Jessie, say hi. Hi, this is your host Jessie from Taipei. Yeah. I also study at foreign languages and literature at Zhongzhen University. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, Jessie from Taipei. Boo 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 boo. Woo! <laughs> Add her please as some sound effect. Woo! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So if you guys still remember, I'm also from the same department as Jessie. She is actually my classmate at the same age. Actually, we have been classmates since 2018. Three years passed. Yeah. Time flies. Oh, where do my three years go? <laughs> anyway, Jessie from Taipei, can you introduce this podcast for those newcomers? Stop! Stop! Don't do that. Just call me Jessie. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Jessie. Let me introduce this podcast. This is a podcast aiming at applying literature in our life. Speaking of literature, you may feel it's unfamiliar. Actually, literature is closely related to our daily life. Yes, that's right. If you guys have listened to our first episode, you will find that literature is actually not that terrifying. It can be about Movies, novels, or even the lyrics of our favorite song. Yeah, and also this is one of the project in apply literature course in our department. In this project, we accept expect to produce three episodes of podcast. Here we come to the second part episode. Yeah, we passed second third of our literature course. Yay! Yay! And we're still trying hard to pass this this literature course as the name of our podcast. Yes, and thank God we are finally here. Woo! Thank you for your explicit introduction, Jesse. So let us get into the content of this episode. What's today's topic, Jesse? The connection between literature in the past and present. Wow, what a title! It sounds so huge. Yeah, it sounds huge, but also quite interesting. Could you let us know more about it? Thank you for saying that. Yes, actually, it isn't that serious. It's about how the works we see in the present, like、um, Harry Potter again. No, not again, Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter is kind of cliche. Okay, fine. Like、um, the Lord of the Ring, 魔戒 Yeah, I know it. 魔戒 Do you remember Legolas in? The Lord of the Ring. Yeah,、I、remember they are handsome. Yes, he's super handsome, and it can be classified as a fantasy literature. Speaking of fantasy literature, can you relate any classical works we've learned in classes, Jesse? Hmm. Let me think. Hmm. A Midnight Summer's Night Dream, 仲夏夜之梦 and written by Shakespeare. <laughs> you mean a Midsummer's Night Dream, 仲夏夜之梦 right? Yeah, yeah. You pass this quiz, Jesse. <laughs>、mm, can I have any gifts?、Mm, no way. <laughs> I decide to ignore you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a good example of fantasy literature. Both of them, I mean, The Lord of the Ring and A Midsummer's Night Dream. Both of them have the Have the element of elves, magic, and the other incredible power. So you can imagine that back to the age of Renaissance, those playwrights were thinking about the same thing as we do. Hmm, I never thought about it. Yeah, that's really amazing that even the leading figure of English literature. I mean William Shakespeare. Hmm. Yeah, is obsessed with magic power. Wow. And the works in the past inspire authors in the future generations. In other words, without these works in the past, we won't have the Lord of the Ring, Harry Potter, or if you know the Chronicle of Narnia, Narnia Trilogy in the present. Hmm. So we are not far away from Shakespeare as we thought, right? <laughs> That's true. But today we won't talk about fantasy literature. Oh, that's a pity. I want to hear more about it. Don't worry, Jesse. I want to talk about another genre of literature I found super interesting. I、mm. guarantee you, it will be super fun. Hmm. And what genres you are gonna share? Gothic style. Do you know that? 
嗯，歌德式文学哦。Oh. Speaking of Gothic style, what will you think of? Sorry, but I got no idea. Hey, Jesse, we are in the same class. The professor has talked about this topic in the class. I'm sure he's crying right now. I'm so sorry. I must have fallen asleep. <laughs> Jesse, let's. Okay, nothing. <laughs> Let me give you some instructions. Gothic style is about some horrible things like incest, murder, necrophilia. Wait, 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 wait. Do you mean about 乱伦谋杀 and 恋尸癖 Yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Are we really in the same <laughs> class? Believe it or not, this is what we've learned in the class.、Uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, the idea of vampire or solitary castle and the werewolf, these horrible figures are also the common elements that often appear in Gothic works. Wow, you made me think of a movie. What's that? You must know it. The movie Twilight.、Oh. You know, in Chinese, it's called 暮光之城 Yes, I know. The heroine of that movie is called Bella. As well. <laughs> hey, Jesse. <laughs> It's one of the derivatives of Gothic works in the present days. Yeah. Wow, that's really secret example. That's right. So it makes sense to say that literature is really in our daily life. Yeah. Now let me give you some examples in the past. Have you heard of a poem called Porphyria's Lover? 子侄传的爱人 by Robert Browning. Hmm, I have no idea. I never heard about it. I guess you will say so. <laughs> Porphyria is a kind of disease that is often related to the image of the vampire. The patients who got Porphyria have pale skin color and are afraid of sunlight, just like a vampire. Wait, but the vampire in Twilight doesn't scare of sunlight. Well, um, today we won't argue about that. That will be another story. Okay. Anyway, from the title of the poem, we can smell that the poem is definitely a gothic poem. Oh, I got it. Can you tell more about it? I want to know more. Okay. The content is even more gothic. How? The poem describes a paranoid man chokes his lover to death in order to preserve her worship to him forever. Ooh, what a psychic man! Right, he's totally out of his mind. After the murder is done, the man even kisses the corpse. He's insane. Yeah, it describes an eccentric love relationship. Hmm, you really widen my horizon. The poem makes me think of a series drama called You, and it's an Mian Shu Dian in Netflix. Yeah, I know it. It also depicts a possessive character trying to control his lover's life and even put her into captivity. As though this kind of topic is quite new, you know, it's really hard to imagine the literature we used to consider as a serious and difficult will depict the themes of distorted love and horror lover. Yeah, I agree with you. Especially, this is a work from about two hundred years ago in the Victorian age. Wow, you surprised me again. Right. This means that the concept of a vampire of or horror lover. It's not new at all. People have started to work on this genre a long, long time ago. That's right. Another important figure in this field is our famous Alan Poe. Do you know him? Hmm. Um. I can remember. He's a cult. He is called the father of Gothic form in the United States. Can you name it now? Oh, 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 oh! He showed up in our Western literature class. <laughs> I'm glad you still remember it. He writes a lot of Gothic works, like the famous Gothic poem, The Raven. The detailed description of sound can be compared to the movie A Quiet Place.、Mm. In Chinese, it's called Jing Jie or Ji Jing Zhi Di. Do you know that movie? Yeah, I know. Wow, I don't know you like horror movies. 
<laughs> Come on, who am I? I'm Jessie from Taipei. <laughs> oh, okay, Jessie from Taipei. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the phenomenon of the whole poem is getting out, especially yeah. when you read it at night while listening to some horror music. Oh, I can name how horrifying it is. And the creepy croaking of the raven will scare you to sweat your back. Aside from the poem. Alan Paul also has written some gothic stories, like、um, the Cask of Amontillado in Chinese is called "一桶白葡萄酒 describing a secret murder in the wine cellar. Hmm, sounds scary, right? And the murders in the Rue Morgue, 莫尔格街凶杀案 which is recognized as the first attempt of detective story in the history. Wow, ancestor of Ming Zhenpan Conan, detective Conan. <laughs> yeah, we can say so. Alan Paul is the mentor who is inspires the household Sherlock Holmes as well. Hmm, I see. It's really amazing to trace back to the literature works in the past and find connection between the past and present. Yeah. Hmm. With all this pioneer paving the way for us, we won't have various types of literature. We said Jesse from Taipei, <laughs> and the literature isn't unchangeable. The innovation is happening constantly. That's so true. That's why the classics are always worth reviewing again and again. Yeah, I agree with you. That's the charm of literature. You can always find something new in it. I also hope the audience deal with us. Hope you can learn something from it. Yeah. Next time when you guys are watching a horror or dark gothic movie like The Vampire Diaries, 吸血鬼日记 if you know that, or any other movies, you name it, you can imagine that people 200 years ago were as fascinated as you are with these dangerous but exciting things. Cool. I bet Alan Paul won't be an alcoholic if he had Netflix. <laughs> he would be a couch potato binge watching these detective dramas. Oh, I like that. Yeah, right. Anyway, Jesse, what courses do you choose this semester? You haven't chosen Victorian literature, have you? I haven't. Otherwise, can you explain why I haven't heard of those points you mentioned above? Um. I thought you just fell asleep again. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I'm、oh, sorry, but I have taken American literature class, and I do enjoy this class every Wednesday because I can learn a lot from it. Wow, that's great. Um, to me, American literature is kind of how to say that somber、mm. because of the history of America. You know. I haven't had the courage to choose the course of American literature yet. You must know what I mean, right? Since you've been to the course. Sure, sure, I know. That's the reason why I want to share about it, especially in this specific period of time. You know, America is always a nation with various races. The discrimination between different races has existed for a long time ago. Yeah. This issue is getting more and more serious. Exactly, exactly. To achieve the equality between different races has always been a big challenge to America. Yeah, from their history, it's not difficult to see that Americans have been struggling with the issue for a long time. Yeah, and I want to talk about the fiction we have read in the class. It's called The Adventure of Huckley Finn, 顽童历险记 written、oh. by Mark Twain. You mean the famous writer Mark Twain? Yes. Oh, the background of the story is before Civil War. Oh, Civil War. You mean 南北战争 Yes. If you guys remember, it's a war which earned the liberty for black people from slavery. Yes. Which also means that in the story, the U.S. still has slavery at the time. And Huck Finn, his appropriate, tried to run away from his father's abuse, and he met his partner Jim. Jim is a slavery, trying to flee to free state to gain freedom. They became friends and faced a lot of challenge on the road. Oh, I've only read the story about his friend. You know,、um, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Tom Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it too. So I'm not familiar with the story of Huck. Also, I read it as a story for children. Then I didn't know the background is so 
dark, I guess. Anyway, what's the part that inspired you the most? Yeah, I feel the same. Before this class, I didn't know it's such a meaningful story, even if it's for children. And the character's traits inspire me the most. As you know, Jim is a black, a slave living a poor life. He doesn't feel resentful, but has a good character. And Huffing, he's from white society. Maybe people around him discriminate against black people. He still stays decent and makes friends with Jim. Yeah, the spirit of the novel is incredible. You have to know that Mark Twain wrote the novel in the end of the 19th century, in a time that race discrimination was really tense. Although America had abolished slavery after Civil War, the situation was still bad. So. It's really precious that he tried to convey the spirit of equality in the book. Exactly, that's why I was fascinated with the adventure of Huckley Finn、mm. because race equality is such an important issue. It's not only in a nineteenth century. Last year, the movement Black Lives Matter got people's attention.、Mm. The society ignored their feelings for a long time, even killed numerous innocent black men. The black community finally plucked up their courage to protest against the discrimination. That's right. However, when people are calling for the equality for the black, it's really sad that the discrimination is still happening on the other races. True, true, true. Not only black lives matter, Asian hate is also a huge issue across the United States now. I know people thought COVID is originated from Asia, so they started to attack Asians. That's a shame. Yeah. Some people start a, a vicious challenge called STEM Asian Challenge and attack、What? other Asians or kids on the streets. That's insane. Yeah. The society is sick, people. No matter if you are black, white, yellow, or brown, or even. Even rainbow, stop hatred, okay? <laughs> yeah, and what's rainbow? <laughs>、um, maybe the community of LGBT. <laughs> hatred doesn't only exist between races, you know. It can be anywhere. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. Even in Taiwan, discrimination happens too. It's really important to respect others and the culture of different communities. That's true. Speaking of culture, you may be thinking of a movie called "Listen Before You Sing." 听见歌在唱 Oh, I've watched the trailer, but I haven't watched the movie yet. It's about the natives in Taiwan, right? Yes, the story is about a group of Bunong kids. Bunong 族 Hmm. They join a choral competition. They practice hard every day, but they didn't get a good result. The teacher asks the judge why they lost, and the judge said they they are Bunong kids, but they sing as a city kids. The judge implies that they didn't represent their Bunong culture. Instead, they hid it and imitated others. And then, I guess. They sing the way as a Bunong and win the competition, right? Yeah, you are so clever. <laughs> That's so cliche. <laughs> <laughs> the elders, the Qi Lao of Bunong, taught them how to sing, and then the kids know more about the culture of Bunong. The pressured Pasi Pupu was placed on the younger generation. What is Pasi Pupu? It sounds so funny. <laughs> <laughs> It is means 八步合音 Oh, yeah. The special way that Bunong people sing, the chorus is amazing. If you get a chance, watch it in the theater. That would be great. Oh, it's just hinting that, as I know, the culture of Native American has been a big theme in American literature as well. Do you think of anything you learn in the class? Oh yes. Do you know the soap heart is Sioux? You mean Sioux? Yes. One of the groups in Native American, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's about a young man who is born as a Sioux and brought up by the culture of white people. So he believes in God, God, and hunts like a and doesn't hunt like a Sioux. Wow, that's also a common situation for Taiwanese natives. They confront the same dilemma that they don't know where they belong to, either the tradition or the new faith. Yes, and also the U.S. government tried to kill the culture of native people, so they made the kids study a special school in order to make the kids be separated from their own cultures and tribe lives. 
That's so sad. He must be confused about his origin.、Mm. The story is a tragic production under the cruel policy of that age. I think. Yeah, you are right. You are right, and that's why I was so touched when watching the movie. Listen before you sing. Ting Jian Ge 在唱 They are native Taiwanese too, but they don't hide their cultures. They learn and promote it, and finally show the value of their own culture at court competition. It sounds so touching. Yeah. Hope people all over the world can learn to respect different cultures of different races someday. Yeah, I hope so. People of different skin colors, different ages, or nationality should pay more attention to this issue. And reading through the literature can help us to reflect the issue from the past to the present. I'm happy to see the society had made a huge progress compared with the past, but we still have a long way to go. Yeah, that's true. It's a little but honest and sincere suggestion from this small podcast. We are not only trying to pass literature course by recording this podcast, but also trying to convey some meaningful message from literature to you guys. So let's try to pass this literature course together, shall we? Yeah. Hope someday we can all pass this course and really learn the last lesson of the precious value from literature. So before we end this episode, I want to recap what we have discussed today. Okay. There's a lot of literature connection between the past and the present. We have talked about how literature of Gothic style involved into novels and movies today, and some works that reflect the virtue of equality and the spirit of cultures. Yes, hope you guys can be inspired by this episode and learn something from it. And class dismissed. Did you pass today's literature course? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure we did, and they did too. So, if you like this episode, please follow us on Spotify. Try to pass literature course and Instagram at the underscore l i t a s s l o, and like our Facebook page, the Literature Association. And we will notify you of the update of a new episode on Facebook. Oh, by the way, we also have a channel on YouTube. Search "Try to Pass Literature Course." You can find us on it. Also, we are going to publish a magazine. Yeah, the topic of the magazine is pop art. Welcome to send your works to Applied Literature CCU at Gmail dot com. Last but not least, special thanks to Dr. Hio. Yeah, who has been very supportive. Our classmates in the applied literature class. Thank all of you for your hard work. And members of the literature association. Thank you guys so much. If there's anyone still listening, I'm sure there are. Till next time. Bye. Bye.